a lot of women in their childbearing age are missing key nutrients before they even try to get pregnant. If you are pregnant, there is no doubt that the nourishment from food that you eat support your body and your organs as well as the baby that is growing inside of you therefore food is considered to be medicine nourishment and food is fuel for you and your growing baby assalamu alaikum welcome back to the nourish muslima my name is halima i am so happy that you are here today with me medulla a lactation counselor and a pre and postnatal nutrition expert in the new york city area i help mamas to nourish their pregnancy love their breath and thrive during their postpartum in this video i'm going to share with you why protein is important and is one of the key nutrients that you need during pregnancy postpartum and your subsequent pregnancies i'm also going to share with you some tips to help you implement adding more protein rich foods in your diet i know by now you know that protein is the building blocks of every little cell in your body Imagine protein as the bricks that build up the house that you live in. So the house that you live in is your body, which houses your brain, your liver, your heart, your lungs, and all the organs that help to function for you to be a human, like a standing human. Without protein, your body cannot hold itself together to be a whole entity, let alone contributing in holding that of your baby. Without protein, your body will not be able to develop new cells, tissues, muscles, cartilages, your nails, your hair, your skin, blood, and all the muscles in your body. And as your body does so, your baby is met with conducive environment for it to grow and thrive optimally. And during pregnancy, your protein needs goes up considerably. But bear in mind that quality and quantity go together when it comes to protein. And variety is very important to consider as well. So what type of protein are you eating? What is the quality of the protein? And how much are you eating? All of these come into play for an optimal protein needs, especially during pregnancy as well as postpartum. The better the quality of your protein, the better the bioavailability. So bioavailability is when the protein digests easily or metabolizes easily for your body to absorb the nutrients. It's not going through any complex processes for it to be digested into something else for that something else to be absorbed in your body. But right away, if your protein is bioavailable, your body can just absorb the protein and utilize it the way it's supposed to utilize. So bioavailability is important. That brings the topic of the variety of protein that you should be aiming to consume when you are pregnant. So there are two types of protein. There is animal protein and there is plant protein. Animal protein is from animals. So that is your meat, your beef, your chicken, your fish, seafoods, your shrimp, and all of that. And then plant protein are from plants. That include your peas, beans, your legumes, nuts and seeds, and much more. So animal protein are more bioavailable and they are considered as quality protein, more so than plant protein. Majority of the time, plant protein come with carbohydrates together with it. However, know that beans and legumes are also high in carbohydrates so eating them in moderation is very important and then animal protein is more of only protein or with fat so bioavailability of plant protein it is not a hundred percent bioavailable animal protein is more bioavailable so your body can use it and your body can use the extra nutrients for instance iron and calcium and zinc and all of the other nutrients that is part of the animal protein to be utilized by your body whenever you can it is best to choose organic grass-fed or pasture-raised meats and chicken as they contain more important nutrients like omega-3 fatty acids that are excellent in supporting your baby's brain beta carotene and vitamin e all are 
very, very important nutrients for you and your baby and also your placenta. Choosing organic and grass fed or pasture raised meat is very important also because there's lower hormones and toxins. There's also fewer antibiotics that is used in these kind of animals. Some great sources of animal protein are beef, lamb, chicken, turkey, duck, eggs, fish and seafoods. Organ meat like liver is an excellent source of protein as well as choline that supports your baby in utero. Choline is especially important because it is helpful in preventing neural tube defects and other neurological problems that can occur in your baby before the baby is born or even after your baby is born. And eating liver and eggs are one of the best ways to get your choline requirements in. Enough protein in your diet also means lowering your risk of preeclampsia which is also known as pregnancy induced hypertension or taxemia. So how much protein do you need when you are pregnant? It is important to know that protein needs tend to vary depending on the stage of pregnancy you are in. It is always helpful to get a general goal to work with. It can be extremely helpful to aim for about 60 to 70 grams of protein per day in the first half of your pregnancy and a general goal of 80 to 100 grams of protein in the second half of your pregnancy is ideal. Aim for higher grams of protein if you are in a larger body or if you are a physically active person. So how does protein help with healthy pregnancy outcomes? Because protein foods are heavier and naturally filling, they help to keep you full for longer and stabilize your blood sugar levels. And blood sugar levels Pike in pregnancy is a huge factor of a lot of negative outcomes that occurs during pregnancy. So we want to maintain a very balanced blood sugar levels during pregnancy. You don't want your blood sugar levels to be fluctuating up and down. So protein helps to stabilize your blood sugar levels and not make it go too up or two down that would affect your hormone balance and would affect the baby inside of you. It is also important to know that blood sugar spikes or fluctuations during pregnancy is a huge nausea trigger, especially during the first trimester when morning sickness is at its peak. So if you are able to maintain a very balanced blood sugar levels, there is a very high chance that nausea would not be a lot of problem for you. Women who are experiencing nausea, especially during the first trimester, are able to control the nausea symptoms or the nausea and vomiting when they eat foods that are high in protein and also try to balance their blood sugar. High protein foods are also especially helpful with low energy and tiredness, especially during the third trimester. A lot of women go through tiredness and fatigue. So when you eat a lot of protein foods, you are likely not to experience extreme tiredness or extreme fatigue because animal protein especially contain iron and the iron are more bioavailable. They are called heme iron that would help you in maintaining a healthy iron levels during pregnancy. Frequent hunger and tiredness are also issues when your meals are not very rich or balanced with protein in them. Some great and easy ways to add in more protein in your meals while you are pregnant is through soups, making broths. You can also add seeds and nuts to smoothies, make steaks with meat or plant protein like quinoa or lentil, make muffins with beans, add peas into fried rice. You can also add nut butters like peanut butter, almond butter, cashew butter into oatmeal. You can also add all of these nut butters in smoothies that add a very beautiful nutty flavor to your smoothies. Another great way is also to add collagen powder into your teas, 
your water, your soups, or any beverage that you have during the day. Of course, there's a lot more out there. One of my favorite ways to add more protein in my diet is by adding collagen in my smoothies, yogurt bowl, tea, and water. I really like the fact that collagen contains glycine and glycine is one of the important amino acids that are helpful during pregnancy. Glycine also aids in faster postpartum recovery. Collagen itself is helpful in recovery and repair of your connective tissues in the postpartum period. Glycine is also very abundant in homemade bone broth and other animal food products like chicken and turkey. And you know the joints, nails, and the cartilages of chicken feet also is helpful. It contains a lot of collagen and glycine that helps in tissue repair and recovery postpartum. As a nutritionist and also a mom, I have noticed that when I make it a priority to include a lot of protein rich foods in my diet for the day, I feel so much better and my energy levels is over the roof. And I think you will too if you start to prioritize adding enough protein in your diet daily. So don't forget after watching this video, if you've not had your breakfast or your lunch or your dinner yet, make it a priority to add more protein foods, especially in your breakfast because the breakfast is the start of your day. So whatever food you eat early on in the morning will determine what your blood sugar levels would be moving forward in the day. So you want to add more protein in your breakfast meal so that you have enough energy, you feel fuller for longer and your blood sugar levels is not spiking and coming right back and going right up and that affects your body as well as your baby. So you don't want to be doing that. You want to add more protein. If you can in the morning when you wake up, you add about two eggs or three eggs. If you like it to be boiled, you boil it and you grate it and you put a little bit of mayonnaise in it and some onions and tomatoes and put it between two toast and you munch on it. That gives you a lot more nutrients and it also sustain you for the longer part of the morning. Thank you very much for watching and engaging with my content. I truly, truly appreciate it. If you have not subscribed yet, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button to join the family. And if you know any pregnant or breastfeeding mama who would benefit from the information in this video, please don't forget to tag her or share this video with her. Jazakumullah Khairan for being here and engaging with my content. Until next time, be in the best of health and iman. Assalamu alaikum.